What is the application for? It is to become a fellow at the Harvard Radcliffe Institute. The Institute selects 50 fellows each year. Radcliffe Fellows are exceptional scientists, writers, scholars, public intellectuals, practitioners, and artists whose work is making a difference in their professional field and in the larger world. Fellows come to Radcliffe from September to May. During that time, they join a uniquely interdisciplinary and creative community based in Radcliffe Yard, a sanctuary in the heart of Harvard University. Over the course of the week, fellows are asked to present their projects at private talks to other fellows or to, the, to a wider audience at public talks. Both types of talks are followed by Q&A and group discussions. The fellowship also offers professional development training sessions, such as how to give good presentations, how to interact with publishers, and much more. In short, a fellowship at Radcliffe is an opportunity to step away from usual routines and dive deeply into a project. At Radcliffe, fellows have the opportunity to work with Harvard students by participating in the Radcliffe Research Partnership Program. In this program, Harvard students engage with the fellows and their projects by researching sources, reviewing book chapters, discussing new approaches to the project. And now some information about financial support. For the 2021-2022 academic year, fellows will receive a stipend of $78,000 plus an additional $5,000 to cover project expenses. Additionally, the Institute offer an allowance for relocation, for moving, housing and childcare. The first thing that you need to know about the application is that at Radcliffe, we, we really process the applications in two different groups, and those two groups have different deadlines. So the first thing to figure out is whether your application fits within the humanities, social sciences, practitioners, and creative arts. That's one group. Or if it fits better with science, engineering, and mathematics. There are some fields that can, could potentially straddle either approach. And if you're in such a field, conferring with the Radcliffe team is the best thing to do. But uh, that's something to do very early on because the deadlines, as you can see, are not that far in the future and they do differ. Next, please. So beyond those two overarching buckets, Within the buckets, there are also some key distinctions. So the eligibility varies depending on what your specific field is. And within the humanities and social sciences, the key eligibility criteria are, first of all, having a doctorate and um, that you have completed it at least two years prior to being a fellow. So it's important to emphasize the Radcliffe Fellowship is not a postdoctoral fellowship. It's really meant for people who are beyond that phase of their careers. And in the humanities or social sciences, it's important to have published a, at least a monograph or at least two articles in referee journals or edited collections. And of course, because there are so many different fields across the humanities and social sciences, the norms within those fields for publishing will differ. So these are minimal criteria for eligibility. Within science, engineering, and mathematics, again, of course, the doctorate is a requirement uh, and at least two years prior to being a fellow. And here, there's a minimum eligibility criterion of having published at least five articles in referee journals. And again, we emphasize that this is not a postdoc. Next, please. The two other categories that differ in terms of eligibility are the creative arts and if you're applying as a practitioner. So within the creative arts, there are discipline specific eligibility requirements and all of these are de detailed on the Radcliffe website. Um, and please notice that the doctorate or a master's in fine arts are not required within the creative arts. So it's, it's quite different. And turning to practitioners, the final group that has different eligibility criteria. 
Radcliffe asks for at least 10 years of relevant professional experience. And Radcliffe welcomes applications from all walks of life. And they really do mean that. So NGOs, government organizations, professionals as examples. Um, the important thing is that you are a uh, recognized, acknowledged leader in your field and that you have proposed a writing project. So even if you are working as a practitioner in a field where writing is not your primary work, the important thing for applying to a Radcliffe Fellowship is that you would produce a written project during your fellowship. Next slide, please. So I wanna start off uh, right off the bat before we go into details about how to craft a great application to just highlight some pitfalls. It breaks our heart in reviewing applications when we see that people have um, put in a lot of work but missed something important. And so please keep these in mind. Um, first of all, look at the specific criteria that we just reviewed together for your particular field. Because uh, if yours is one that requires a PhD, you, you cannot be, your application cannot be reviewed um, if you don't have one. So please, I know it can be a little complicated because the criteria differ by category. So just make double sure that you are clear on what your category requires. And um, for example, in the arts, there are field specific requirements uh, that are important to pay attention to. Also missing supporting materials because there are so many applications to Radcliffe, it, it's really a tremendous number, and the and there's only room for a small set to actually be admitted. Um, there is no re-review process. So if you are missing required supporting materials, then your your proposal can't be reviewed within that. So please make sure that you are good on all those things. And of course, late submission is another hard deadline. And then lastly, although all we former fellows wish we could reapply, um, the, we are not eligible once we've had the wonderful experience of being a fellow. Next, please. So I'm gonna overview what the application materials include and then give some tips on each part. So first of all, there is an application form. And I put here in parentheses, important. Sometimes we think of forms as just sort of the cover to the actual proposal. And we think maybe only the actual proposal would matter, but that is not the case here. Having sat in many rooms reviewing and discussing these applications, uh, what you put on the form is very much considered. And in fact, uh, as, as you might expect, it forms, it, it creates the initial impression that reviewers have of your proposal. And so there are questions on the form, like what most appeals to you about being a Radcliffe Fellow? Please think deeply about this. Um, we sometimes see applications that say, well, I like an interdisciplinary atmosphere. And uh, because there are hundreds and hundreds of people applying for that same spot, the ones that are giving a much more thoughtful response than that are, are going to have a higher score. Um, another question that appears there is what a successful year at Radcliffe would look like for you. And so you could imagine one could answer that by saying, well, I'd be productive because I'd be free from other responsibilities. And Sure, that's true, but how are you going to differentiate your application from all of the others that are also saying that same thing? So help your application rise to the top by taking every question on the form uh, seriously and, um, and think deeply about it. The other things besides the form are a special short curriculum beta, which we'll say more about in a minute, your project proposal, a writing or work sample, and three letters of recommendation. Let me say a little more in depth about each of these. Next slide, please. 
So starting with the CV, first of all, uh, because there are so many applicants, that's uh, the reviewers can only review a short CV. So this is your chance to pack into six pages whatever best speaks to your capabilities and what makes your project a great fit for Radcliffe. So please do not just truncate off the final pages of your CV, but instead pay close attention to making sure that those six pages speak um, really well to what it is you propose to do and how you are qualified to do them. Uh, along those lines, you wanna put your most important publications and achievements. And this is really crucial because every review committee, there, you do go through a discipline specific process, but ultimately there is an interdisciplinary review committee. And so uh, people in one field may not know what is a peer reviewed publication in another field. So it's crucial to make that clear. Next, please. And uh, in your project proposal, there's um, an opportunity to give an overview. This is another aspect of the application where one might think, oh, I can go quickly over this, but please do not. <laughs> um, there, there's, um, it, each part is, is very important. And so details on the format matter. And it's important to only do one project per applicant. So if you're thinking about several different things, please do not list several different things. Choose whichever you think is best. And of course, stay within the word limit. Next, please. And uh, as I alluded to a minute ago, the, uh, the project piece starts out with an abstract. And uh, the Radcliffe folks really do pay attention to things like if you stick within the 150 word limit. And of course they do that out of fairness uh, so that every project gets an equal shot at gaining a spot. As I mentioned, there are gonna be interdisciplinary teams reviewing your proposal as well as discipline specific teams. And so it's crucial to write for an educated audience so that any educated person in any discipline would be able to understand what it is you propose to do. Um, you are free to design the abstract according to your preferred format, but here is one you could consider using. And um, you don't have to write it all down right now because the webinar contents will be available for you to watch later but essentially starting out with an introduction to the field, then describing the project, going on to the material, the sources, the archives, et cetera, and a broader perspective. Next, please. The main body of your proposal, crucially important for obvious reasons. Uh, your goal is to describe the project and then Explain the significance of the topic, not just to people in your field, but to a broader educated audience. Think New York Times reader is who you are writing for. At the same time that you're writing for that broad level understanding, you of course need to write the work in the context of your discipline. So how does what you're going to study represent a frontier, a new breakthrough, filling in a gap, any of those things? and uh, explain how it would add to the discipline. Really important to include the theory and the methodology. So the project will be evaluated. Sometimes there's a great theory, but it's unclear to reviewers how exactly you're gonna go about doing what you propose. And then it's hard to uh, give full points to that project or vice versa. A lot of methodological detail without telling us as reviewers how it adds up. And of course, cite the work of others. We don't want you to make it seem like you are the star of the show. We understand that work is cumulative and um, we do want to see that you are properly contextualized and building upon relevant literature. Next, please. Uh, it's also important to let us know the status 
The ideal status is that you have collected your data and or done the work you need to do in the field, and now you are ready to write about it. However, Radcliffe has some flexibility. Um, if you say that you want to be in residence at Radcliffe, and then you propose that you're going to be far away across the world collecting data, that is a potential problem there and one to think about. And um, of course, you want it to be original, well-conceived, et cetera. Uh, there are special uh, considerations if the project is has some practical value. How is it going to make the world a better place? And so please put that in your project. Next, please. Writing or work sample. A lot of this is very straightforward and detailed on the website. You want it to be in English. It ideally should be relevant to the work you propose. However, if it's some a situation where you're starting in a new direction in your work, of course, say that and explain. Give reviewers the understanding for why you've chose the pieces you've chosen. And if it's co-authored, it's crucial to indicate what your role on the project was. Next, please. Letters of recommendation. This is um, not as straightforward as it might seem. So it's really important to talk to your reviewers ahead of time so that they don't just rattle off the same letter that they would write if you were applying for a professorship position or a practitioner position that they had on file. It's really better if they can write a letter suited to the Radcliffe Fellowship because the letter ideally would speak not only to your core competency, but also whether your work is suited to the Radcliffe Fellowship environment and whether you yourself are someone who likes to be in an intellectual community versus someone who would prefer to stay in your own office by yourself. And um, if you're the latter, probably the Radcliffe environment is, is not necessarily one that you would thrive in because this is truly an intellectual community. Um, and then, of course, there are some guidelines you can find on the website about uh, who the letter writers can be. Next, please. OK, so that's a brief overview of the components. Again, all of the details are right there for you on the website. That was my attempt to give you some of the inside um, reflections from being on the reviewer side.